Uh, today's lab, we're going to do an oxidation of cyclododecanol, which is a secondary alcohol. And the equipment that you'll need is a 25 milliliter round bottom flask, condenser, stir bar for the round bottom flask, thermometer. Our heat source today is going to be a water bath again, so we're going to use a beaker for that. Uh, we'll need, after the reaction is complete, to remove one substance from the other. We'll do an extraction, so separatory funnels needed. Uh, graduated cylinders, you need fairly small ones because the amounts we're using is not very great. Clamps uh, to clamp the glassware in place. Uh, pipettes, we need some of those. Of course, the water uh, going in and out of these rubber tubes, we'll need that as well. Um, today we're doing oxidation of a secondary alcohol, and I just wanted to review a little bit of what happens when alcohols are treated with some type of oxidizing agent. And the O in the brackets refers to oxidizing agents. We'll talk about those in just a second. What I have here is a primary alcohol, a secondary alcohol, and a tertiary alcohol. And although I'm not going through the actual mechanism, I'll just say this is lasso chemistry, so you can kind of see quickly how the, the bonds are broken and the bonds are being formed. If I have a uh, alcohol, no matter if it's primary, secondary, tertiary, the very first step in any oxidation is to remove two hydrogens. You're going to remove a hydrogen from the OH group, the hydroxyl group, and you'll also remove a hydrogen from the carbon that is bonded to the OH group. So if you remove two things, you have to compensate by forming a double bond. So notice if I'm looking at this primary alcohol and I want to oxidize it, I'm going to take a hydrogen off the OH, I'm going to take a hydrogen off the carbon bonded to the OH, and then I have to compensate by forming a double bond. So the first product that we get is an aldehyde. The problem with aldehydes, however, is that they are also easily oxidized. So if you have a fairly strong oxidizing agent, this will form first, but then we'll go further and form a carboxylic acid. And the only difference between a carboxylic acid and aldehyde, we have an oxygen substituted in between the carbon and this hydrogen. If I have a secondary alcohol, again, the first step, I'm gonna remove two hydrogens, hydrogen off the OH, hydrogen off the carbon bonded to the OH, compensate by forming a double bond, and we end up with the ketone. Ketones are fairly resistant to further oxidation with the oxidizing agents we're using here. However, later in the semester, you'll see that it is possible to take a ketone and take it to an ester, but, but not by the method we're using today. If I have a tertiary alcohol, remember the first thing that has to happen is removal of two hydrogens. I'm gonna take a hydrogen off the OH group, but notice there's no hydrogens bonded to the carbon of that tertiary alcohol. So therefore, NR stands for no reaction. The oxidizing agents we're going to use today um, is the sodium hypochlorite, which is what is in bleach. But just to kind of go over some of these others, chromic acid, uh, sodium dichromate, sulfuric acid, potassium permanganate, usually you have to heat potassium permanganate for oxidation to um, proceed. But all of these are very strong oxidizers. The other thing that's associated with these, these contain these heavy metals like chromium and manganese. So they're trying on a synthetic point of view, they're trying to delete as much of the use of these as possible just because they eventually will find their way into the environment. So the sodium hypohalite ions, if you will, which we're using sodium hypochlorite that's in bleach, this, can, this is a much milder oxidizing agent and we don't have to worry about the heavy metals that we find in these others. Um, the reaction we're doing today is a secondary alcohol, the cyclododecanol. Uh, so that is a secondary alcohol that we should form the carbonyl group of the ketone. Now, ironically, when we form that, we'll isolate it, but we have to carry out chemical tests to figure out what we have. And so the chemical test will be using chromic acid today, uh, but we're using a very small amount just for it to detect whether or not we have an aldehyde or ketone. As I said earlier, aldehydes are easily oxidized further, but ketones are not. So the chromic acid test should end up negative because that should only be positive for the aldehyde um, test, so if it's negative. 
And if it is negative, that tells us that we've used up all of our alcohol as well. So we, we can look at it in terms of how successful the reaction was and did we form the carbonyl group. The other thing is we're going to use another chemical called 2,4-DNP. And what that is positive for both aldehydes and ketones, that's just giving us one more piece uh, of information that if it is positive, we would know we would have a carbonyl group of a ketone or aldehyde, but by the chromic acid test, we could rule out the aldehyde group because that would be positive. I have the apparatus set up. We've got the 25 milliliter round bottom flask cooked up to the condenser. We have water going through the condenser in the bottom out the top. Stir bar, stirring the components inside this flask. What I have in there is 0.516 grams of our alcohol, which is the cyclododecanol. We've got 1.2 mils of acetone and 0.4 mils of acetic acid. We need to heat the contents to about 45 degrees Celsius. Once we're at 45 degrees Celsius, then we'll start adding the bleach. We'll add about 4.5 mils over a 30 minute period. Once we do that, uh, after 30 minutes, we'll stop the stirring. We'll take a look to see if there's any excess oxidizer left. If so, we'll heat it another 10 minutes. If not, we may have to add more bleach. We'll continue that until we have excess of the oxidizing agent, the bleach, and then we'll do the extraction. So the contents of the flask are at 45 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding the bleach. We're going to add, uh, oh, maybe half a milliliter or so. And we're going to do this over about uh, 30 minutes. that stir a couple minutes and then I'm going to uh, insert the thermometer and check to make sure that it's still around that 45 degrees. That stir just another minute or so and then I'll add another amount. It's been, all the uh, bleach has been added over a 30 minute time period. I've let it stir a couple more minutes extra. I'm gonna turn the stir bar off and let the layers separate. Uh, and then I'm gonna take, I'll have to remove the condenser. I need to go into the aqueous layer, take a little bit of that out, a drop of that, and put it on some dampened starch iodide paper and see if it turns the blue black color. Potassium starch iodide paper did not turn the blue-black color, so I'm going to add a little bit more bleach, let it stir at this temperature for another two to three minutes, and then check again. Still not a positive test, so I'm going to add another 0.4. And this is, um, this is after, we had to add three different editions of the bleach, but now you can see we got the uh, blue-black response on the starch iodine paper. So now what we're going to do is let that heat another 10 minutes, um, and then after that we'll let it cool and we'll go through the extraction process. 